My name is Tyler Gage, and I'm the president of RUNA. We're a new social enterprise that works with indigenous farming families in the Ecuadorian Amazon uh, to produce a native tea called Wayusa. And Wayusa is a tea that indigenous communities here have drank for thousands of years as part of their morning rituals. Um, it's an energizing plant that has caffeine and antioxidants. It's been a big part of how communities come together to share myths, dreams, and stories before dawn. Uh, that forms a central part of the Quechua, Shuar, and Atuar cultures in the Ecuadorian Amazon. What we've done is we've been able to build a vertically integrated supply chain that incorporates the farmer associations, an export company in Ecuador, and an LLC company in the United States to be able to manage um, our business holistically and to um, principally provide the direct market access and work across the economic, social, and environmental goals that we have as an organization. So I started noticing that perhaps my role as a foreign researcher was not the most uh, impactful way to benefit these communities, but rather um, the economic side was the missing piece, was the missing link, that they, were, they had these rich traditions, but they're invariably tied up in this modern world, in this modern economy, that uh, due to oil exploitation, mining, number of forces, it's part of their lives. These are not pristine indigenous communities living in remote Amazon rainforests, it is remote, but they're dealing with market economics. They have income now, they have schools, um, basic things that were not part of their traditional ancestral reality. So what we've been able to focus on is how can we use economics, how can we use commerce as a way to support the communities and to unite these various cultural aspects, social and economic forces um, into more holistic development opportunity for the communities. We got very inspired by the business. We were able to win the Rhode Island State Business Plan Competition and the Brown University Business Plan Competition. Um, that gave us some good leverage. And as we graduated in December of 2008, we moved to Ecuador to make contacts, to assess the feasibility and look at what we could do trying to start uh, this business. It's been a big blessing for us uh, to be able to work as a team. Uh, Dan mccombie has been my best friend since my freshman year at school. And to be able to bring the understanding we have of each other, our strengths, weaknesses, many quirks, um, to be able to create a really fun workspace has been an amazing um, aspect of starting Bruno. At the same time, there have been lots of difficulties being so intimate and respecting each other as friends so much. Having to create boundaries around work has been an issue. Having to divide up founders equities and never much of a fun process. Um, and we had amazing advice from one of our advisors early on, Danny Warshe, who was actually our professor at Brown. And his big advice was, with any partnership agreement, founders equity, etc., cetera, uh, is to find feel-good numbers. So Danny, amazing advice that, especially trying to divide up very complicated things like founders equity, um, can get quite complicated. And there's no formula, there's no fixed precedent, there's no easy way to do it. So rather than trying to create weird, complicated structures for dividing equity, for finding numbers and valuations, et cetera, really take a 30,000 foot view and say, you know, what feels good? What are you contributing? What am I contributing? What's our vision? How can we make sure that this is flexible so that if A, B, C, F, Z happens in the future, that we have transparency and ability to work, um, but really finding numbers that work good for us. Our main goal was to network. We realized that Wayusa is a plant that's based on community and collaboration. So we started making contacts with other NGOs, government organizations, social businesses to figure out what operating a business in Ecuador was like. 
we were able to make some good partnerships early on with Fundacion Natura, Ecuador's largest conservation NGO. So with our interest actually in activity and their interest in producing Wayusa so that it could access the market, we teamed up to start um, building nurseries. We wanted to look at how uh, we could grow Wayusa in sustainable agriculture systems. So from there, once we uh, realized that from the business plan, we had a great market opportunity. From the production side, we'd done our research, built some teams, and realized that we could both harvest, process, and produce Wayusa to meet this demand. From there, we started looking for funding. You know, logically, as a business, we need some cash to be able to do things. We've been able to raise both private investment as an LLC company in the U.S. and also receive a series of grants from the Ecuadorian government, uh, the U.S. government, and the German government. The way we did that was largely through networking, being very persistent to talk to anyone and everyone we could, uh, learn about different opportunities locally and internationally to apply for funding to start an innovative social enterprise. Um, thankfully, our timing is very good. I've seen a big change even in the last couple years in development-focused funding, going more to businesses who can generate impact locally, provide markets, training, um, add quality and value to products on the local level. So we, we thankfully, with all these elements that we incorporated from this native plant that can serve biodiversity, generating income for indigenous families, and providing a new export market, we're able to apply for a number of different grants. Uh, the first one we received was from Corpey, the active branch of Ecuador's export ministry, that gave us an amazing $50,000 grant to uh, create our first processing facility, to do additional research, to build our first uh, technical team to do reforestation programs. So as a business, we've aimed to focus on hitting initial milestones and use those milestones as next steps forward. Uh, so after getting those grants, we were able to build out our regional teams, start developing a local presence, more networking with the communities. Uh, we inaugurated the world's first Wayusa factory last year, um, which we've been able to operate and export about 15,000 pounds this last year. And then on the product side, early on, last uh, December in 2009, it was December 2nd, and Dan and I realized, you know, hey, it's Christmas time, we could, and we have a bit of Wayusa we've processed, what if we bring it to market? So we ordered some pouches and we got our first sacks up and printed out labels on Dan's uh, Epson printer to do a very small launch of our products on our website, which actually did quite well our first month of sales uh, last December. So it's been a very entrepreneurial process for sure. Uh, we've always been looking for every opportunity we have, um, trying to make little steps, learn as much as we can from the steps we take forward and then use that as leverage to take bigger steps in the future. For us, um, our social impact model is wrapped up in the commercial enterprise. So running a, a successful commercial business successfully is actually generating the majority of our social impact. So in being able to sell a lot of Wayusa, we can buy a lot of Wayusa from the farmers and generate that direct impact. So that, that basic structure and that uh, characteristic of our supply chain and our industry was what inspired us to become primarily a company. And then outside of that to create foundations both locally in Ecuador and in the United States to help leverage the income uh, that we're generating for the farmers to create additional social impact. My first recommendation for any entrepreneurs looking to start a business is to first be clear of why you're starting your company. If you know if you're starting a company primarily to make money, that's a very valuable and um, right on intention, but knowing why that's why you're doing it, or if you're starting a social enterprise. Particularly, it's more complicated if you're starting a social enterprise because we get the question, are you trying to help people or are you trying to sell something? Whereas for us, we're trying to do all of it and understanding where the different pieces are um, is very important. So understand your motivations would be my first recommendation. Second is to persevere. Entrepreneurship requires massive amounts of time, attention, flexibility, um, your commitment to reworking your business, finding ways to get around hurdles, encountering hurdles, getting over them, finding new ones, looking for new ones. And without that doggedness, um, I think it's very difficult to be successful as an entrepreneur and something that we encounter and have to welcome every day as a new challenge. Uh, and lastly, my recommendation would be um, test. As much as you can take little steps, get things out there, experiment, get feedback, and then re-innovate, redesign, it gives you much more connection to your consumers and much more sustainability. I think oftentimes people think that they need to have something very perfect and then bring it to market, whereas if you can create something initial, be very clear about what you want to test, 
get it out there, get feedback, rework, get it out there a bit bigger, get more feedback, you, um, your likelihood of success is likely much higher. Because if you're inside your own space and head and research and development and then launch what you think is best, you don't have the benefit of a massive network of people who can give you feedback and help you develop your concept, help you figure out what needs you're fulfilling in the marketplace.